The Strengths and Weaknesses of Eritrea Hello, these flowers. We are starting a new series on the channel where we present to you the strengths and weaknesses of all the countries on the African continent. To kickstart this series, we shall be taking you to the eastern part of Africa and we shall be looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the beautiful country of Eritrea. Eritrea is a country in eastern Africa with its capital at Asmara, bordered by Sudan in the west, Ethiopia to the south, Djibouti in the southeast. Dear the Explorers, we have an educated video on the 10 things you didn't know about Eritrea which did really well. Click on the card on your screen to check it out. This beautiful country has both aspects of it that make it strong as well as those that put it at a vulnerable position. These could be seen as the strengths and weaknesses of Eritrea and in this video we shall explore both in order to make valid judgments on the country. The strengths of the nation of Eritrea are the internal aspects of the country either natural or man-made which helps or fosters the country's growth and progress. The weaknesses on the other hand are internal aspects that hinder the country's improvement and are strikes which make the nation less attractive. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Let's begin the video on a good note by looking at the strengths of Eritrea. Extensive Mineral Deposits Eritrea produces salt, gypsum and kaolin but also has resources of asbestos, barite, potash and talc. Metal resources include copper, gold, iron ore, lead, zinc, silver and magnesium. There have been discoveries of high-grade polymetallic volcanogenic massive sulfide ore deposits in recent years. Most mineral production in the south of the country was eliminated due to tension from ongoing conflicts with Ethiopia. About 500 kilograms of gold was mined annually in the late 1990s. In the Dalot Depression, large quantities of neogene evaporates can be found, including halide, gypsum, and potassium salt. This rich mineral deposits have been a great sustenance to the economy of Eritrea, and as the days go by, Eritreans keep discovering new mineral resources on their land. Strategic Position on the Red Sea Eritrea is located in East Africa, Water to the northeast and east by the Red Sea, Sudan to the west, and Ethiopia to the north and Djibouti to the southeast. Eritrea lies between latitudes of 12 degrees and 18 degrees north and longitudes of 36 degrees and 44 degrees east. The country is virtually bisected by a branch of the East African Rift. Also, Eritrea at the southern end of the Red Sea is the home of the fork in the rift. The Dalak Archipelago and its fishing grounds are situated off the sandy and arid coastline. The position of Eritrea is good for business as they are not landlocked, tourism as it has nice beaches and so much potentials. This is what we mean for business, Eritrea can ship to its own coast and it has some pretty good ones which is a great strength to the country compared to landlocked countries. Besides, the coast is filled with numerous beaches which increase the potential for tourism and another source of income as the citizens can use the coastline for fishing. The landscapes and cultural diversity of Eritrea is tourism. Eritrea is a paradise of natural beauty and filled with varying wildlife. It has several species of mammals and a rich avifauna of 560 species of birds. Enforced regulations have helped in steadily increasing their numbers throughout Eritrea. Mammals commonly seen include the Abyssinian hare, African wildcat, black-backed jackal, African golden wolf, the net, ground squirrel, Pale fox, submarine gazelle, warthog, and docus gazelle are common on the coastal plains and in Gashbarka. Now, let's take a look at some of the weaknesses of this small country. The weaknesses of a nation are not doom stones or aspects which will take the country to its grave. They are rather just internal deficiencies, which are caused by the nation's own inbuilt or functioning and slowdown of progress, or paint a poor image of the country to the world and most especially its citizens. Weaknesses may be in terms of the population size, aging population, a poor economy or much more and can be controlled in most instances, though not all. So here are the weaknesses of Eritrea. The climate of Eritrea is not very friendly. According to Köppen climate classification, Eritrea has either a hot semi-arid climate or a hot desert climate, although temperatures are much more moderated at the highest elevations. In the central highlands, the hottest month is usually May to June with highs around 27 degrees centigrade to 30 degrees centigrade. Over there, the climate is usually sunny and dry, 
the sunshine is usually very hot. On the coast along the Red Sea, the summertime is long, from June to September, and extremely hot with average high temperatures ranging from 40 degrees centigrade to 46 degrees centigrade, and it's even hotter in Denkalia. The climate of Eritrea is not so favorable, which can hurt the tourism industry and scare some tourists from visiting, reducing the income from tourism and hence the country's revenue. More so, the country has been known to experience some thunderstorms of great severity, which destroys crops as well as reduces its agricultural productivity. The country is an international pariah state. The North Korea of Africa, a giant slave camp, Africa's fastest emptying country, the cursed land, Africa's most secretive and repressive state. These are just some of the labels applied to Eritrea in the recent years. The problem with labels is they stick and become the lens through which the country is viewed. Although many of these headline-grabbing descriptions are exaggerated and oversimplified, Eritrea is facing immense challenges, some of the most serious in its short 25-year history. A United Nations appointed commission of inquiry found that crimes against humanity, including enslavement, torture, murder, rape and enforced disappearance, have been committed on a systematic and widespread scale, causing the UN Security Council to refer the matter to the International Criminal Court. What's worse is that the inquiry discovered some deep and disturbing problems for which the president of Eritrea, Isaiah Afwerki, was charged with. Besides the fact that Eritrea has never held national elections, has no parliament, no opposition parties and no free press, acknowledges that there have been individual transgressions of human rights, but describes the accusations as legally indefensible and politicized. It says the report is entirely one-sided because members of the commission only spoke to Eritreans outside the country, many of whom have their own agendas. Just a week after the report was released, another bombshell hit Eritrea. There was a serious flare-up on its border with Ethiopia, perhaps the most significant since the devastating 1998-2000 border war in which tens of thousands died. Details of the latest clashes were murky. As a result of all these circumstances, Eritrea had serious sanctions including arms embargo, asset freeze, and travel ban on Eritrean officials. Even though these sanctions were lifted in 2018, the relations and reputation of Eritrea remains a foggy condition. Eritrea has problematic human rights records. Eritrea is a one-party state in which national legislative elections have been repeatedly postponed. According to Human Rights Watch, the government's human rights record is considered amongst the worst in the world. Most Western countries have accused the Eritrean authorities of arbitrary arrests and detentions and of detaining an unknown number of people without charge for their political activism. However, the Eritrean government has continually dismissed the accusations as politically motivated. Both male and female same-sex sexual activity is illegal in Eritrea. Human rights violations are allegedly often committed by the government or on behalf of the government. Freedom of speech, press, assembly and associations are limited. During the Eritrean independence struggle in 1998 Eritrean-Ethiopian war, many atrocities were also committed by the Ethiopian authorities against unarmed Eritrean civilians. In June 2016, a 500-page United Nations Human Rights Council report accused Eritrea's government of extrajudicial executions, torture, indefinitely prolonged national service and forced labor, and indicated that sexual harassment, rape, and sexual servitude by state officials are also widespread. Barbara Lock Biller of the European Parliament Subcommittee on Human Rights said the report detailed very serious human rights violations and asserted that EU funding for development would not continue as at present without change in Eritrea. The Eritrean Foreign Ministry responded by describing the Commission's report as wild allegations, which were totally unfounded and devoid of all merit. Several countries also disputed the report's language and accuracy, including the US and China. The freedom of the media in Eritrea is limited or non-existent. In its 2017 Press Freedom Index, Reporters Without Borders ranked the media environment in Eritrea at the bottom of the list of 180 countries. According to the BBC, Eritrea is the only African country to have no privately owned news media. And reporters without borders said of the public media, they do nothing but relay the regime's belligerent and ultra-nationalist discourse. 
that the single foreign correspondent now lives in Asmara. The state-owned news agency censors news about external events. Independent media have been banned since 2001. The Eritrean authorities had reportedly imprisoned the fourth highest number of journalists after Turkey, China and Egypt. Heavy dependence of the economy on agriculture and the involvement of the government in the economy. Eritrea's economic freedom score is 38.5, making its economy the 177th freest in the 2020 index. Its overall score has decreased by 0.4 points due to lower scores for property rights and judicial effectiveness. Eritrea is ranked 47th among 47 countries in the Sub-Sahara African region and its overall score is one of the lowest in the world. Index grading of Eritrea began in 2009 and its economy has scored higher than 40 only three times since then. GDP growth rates, fought by the agriculture and mining sectors, are relatively meaningless in a country that remains one of the world's least developed, with 65% of its people living in rural areas and 80% of them dependent on subsistence agriculture for their livelihoods. Eritrea has an extensive amount of resources such as copper, gold, granite, marble and portage. 70% of the Eritrea accounting for roughly one-third of the economy. Eritrea's main agricultural products include sorghum, millet, barley, wheat, legumes, vegetables, fruits, sesame, linseed, cattle, sheep, goats and camels. The Eritrean authoritarian style of leadership also doesn't help the economy, given that the government runs almost every aspect of it without any space for any improvement from the private section is very disturbing, which retards the growth of the economy. Extreme poverty and heavy immigration of Eritreans The Eritrean-Ethiopian war severely hurt Eritrea's economy. GDP growth in 1999 fell less than 1% and GDP degrees by 8.2% in 2000. In May 2000, the war resulted in some $600 million in property damage and losses including $225 million in livestock and 55,000 homes. This and many other factors have led to the constant flow of Eritrean citizens across many borders, especially into Europe, hence one of Eritrea's numerous names known as the emptying country. Since around 2010, the flow of unaccompanied minors from Eritrea has significantly increased and has become a subject of international concern. In 2015, over 5,000 unaccompanied minors from Eritrea sought asylum in Europe, according to the Mixed Migration Center. In 2018, the number was 3,500. Minors are only part of a wider exodus that involves mostly Eritreans in their 20s and 30s. The UN Refugee Agency calculates that at the end of 2018, there were over 500,000 Eritrean refugees worldwide, a high number for a country of just over 5 million people. Initially driven by a simmering border conflict with Ethiopia, this mass migration continues to be fought by a lack of political, religious and social freedom. In addition, there are little economic prospects in the country. This is extremely bad for the small nation as this has led to brain drain as most of the adults living are educated and skillful citizens who would have contributed greatly into the economy of Eritrea. Eritrea has a very difficult business climate. Eritrea is often in the news for all the wrong reasons. Its high rates of migration to Europe as it has sent more refugees to Europe in recent years than any other African nation. Its conflicts with neighboring Ethiopia and Djibouti and controversy over its mandatory and indefinite national service conscription program. Human rights activists in particular have long singled out the country for criticism, calling it the North Korea of Africa. The inappropriateness of that comparison is increasingly recognized, but misunderstandings about the nature of the Eritrean regime continue to abound. This uncertainty in Eritrea's political and economic situation has made it the most difficult business environment for both nationals and foreign investors. Besides, due to the lack of available financial information and unpredictable legal system, doing business in this country is extremely difficult, which has made many investors look the other way. Conclusion no matter the continent in the world, every country has its own weaknesses as well as its strengths. Known as a perfect nation, and each and every nation just strives to minimize the weaknesses in order to be a better nation for its citizens and potential visitors. No matter what anyone says, any country strives to protect its citizens before any other country as a neighbor. Hence, 
while the sin is weak by the outside, that's my rather be serving the citizens well. And so, we can never be 100% completely sure when it comes to the internal affairs of a country. Should Eritrea work on its weaknesses, it will become an ideal country and the high rate of immigration will drastically reduce. There you have it, Desplorers. Those were the strengths and weaknesses of Eritrea. Which other country would you like us to cover? Leave your suggestions in the comments and we will do all to grant your request. Also, if you did enjoy the video, do all to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends.